Now back to Judy. We turn to Iraq and a new report critical of U.S. reconstruction efforts in the country. It was September 2004. President Bush appeared in the Rose Garden 18 months after he had ordered the invasion of Iraq. The insurgency was raging, but he had an optimistic view of the American effort beyond the fighting. Electricity has been restored above pre-war levels. Telephone service has increased dramatically. More than 2,000 schools have been renovated and millions of new textbooks have been distributed. There's much more work to be done. Now, a decade after the war began, Iraqi and U.S. officials portray much of the work as failures, wasted opportunities, miscalculated, and mistakes. It's all in a final report by the Special Inspector General for Iraq Reconstruction, Stuart Bowen. He offers a damning appraisal of a project well-intentioned but hugely wasteful in money and lives. To date, rebuilding Iraq has cost more than $60 billion in U.S. funds, and more than 700 people have died supporting Reconstruction. Apart from tens of thousands of Iraqis and 4,400 Americans killed in the war itself. Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki told Bowen that the overall benefit to Iraq was small when compared with the size of the sum spent. And U.S. Senator Susan Collins of Maine said the level of fraud, waste, and abuse in Iraq was appalling. She recalls she was angered to learn that Reconstruction money found its way into the hands of insurgent groups. Bowen also concluded that $8 billion of a separate fund of nearly $24 billion in Iraqi money was wasted. It came from Iraqi oil and gas revenues and seized assets and was flown to Baghdad by the U.S. in the form of cash. California Congressman Henry Waxman was incredulous at that revelation in 2007. The cash weighed more than 363 tons and was loaded onto C-130 cargo planes to be flown into Baghdad. The numbers are so large that it doesn't seem possible that they're true. Who in their right mind would send 360 tons of cash into a war zone? According to Bowen, the list of poorly conceived, over budget, and badly managed projects is long, including a $100 million wastewater treatment plant in Fallujah that serves only 9,000 homes and is eight years behind schedule, and the Basra Children's Hospital in Iraq South, 200 percent over budget four years behind schedule, and still incomplete. And I'm joined now by the author of the report, the Special Inspector General for Iraq Reconstruction, Stuart Bowen. And we thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, Judy. So you were appointed to this position nine years ago. It was during the Bush administration, the very beginning of all this. What was your mission? What, did they, what were you originally told you were supposed to do? To audit and inspect the programs and projects of the Coalition Provisional Authority and to provide advice and recommendations to the Congress on Iraq's reconstruction. Did you have any idea then of the, the magnitude of what you were going to be doing? Well, the, the, the first sign of it was my first trip to Iraq in February of 2004 when I was walking the halls of the Republican Palace I, behind two people. One turned to the other and said, uh, we can't do that anymore. There's a, a new inspector general here. That sent me a signal that, that this, the challenges before me were, were quite substantial. Well, as we said, $60 billion, and you write it's the largest relief and reconstruction effort for one country mm -hmm. in U.S. history. What happened to the money? Uh, well, it, it was spent, about half of it, on security, on training the Iraqi police and the army. And why? Because the security situation deteriorated gravely in 2004 and 2005 into a virtual civil war in 2006 and 2007 that required the surge, a multi-level strategy to push back that violence, and, and which eventually it did. Uh, the other half was spent on capacity building, um, major reconstruction projects, and I say in, in our report learning from Iraq, at least $8 billion was wasted. 
and you and you do signal single out security. Yes, that's right. So was that ab that was essential to the ability of the reconstruction effort to be complete? That's right. When when Ambassador Negroponte arrived in the middle of 2004 and reviewed the Coalition Provisional Authority's spend plan, he realized that not enough was being spent on security, and he he re. Uh, he ordered the reprogramming of, of, of over three billion into security, but then the Iraqi Security Forces Fund was created by the Congress, and it spent 20 billion over the next seven years, uh, beginning under General Petraeus's leadership, uh, and and it did so, I think, to to good effect. Iraq's security of forces today are better equipped and better trained than they've ever been. So you're saying something good did come out of something? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the Iraqis I interviewed. Uh, said things like, hey, I fly over Baghdad, I can't point at, at uh, a, a construction, a piece of construction that, that the United States built. Well, a lot of that money uh, was spent on building capacity, of pro providing equipment. And, and it is true that a lot of our infrastructure efforts fell well short of what was expected because of the failure to consult. But a lot of our money paid off in, in, the, in the capacity building side of the security sector. Failure to consult, what does that That's mean? Right. Uh, well, this this report, I interviewed all the Iraqi leadership, uh, present and past, the, the previous two prime ministers, well as Prime Minister Maliki, and and they said almost to a person, uh, their their chief complaint was was that the United States did not consult with them about what Iraq really needed, and instead pursued a program that it desired. Deputy Secretary of State uh, Bill Burns said this to me in my interview with him that that we tried to do it all and do it our own way. And, and uh, I think that's a core lesson from Iraq, that, that you have to, as General Petraeus said, understand the culture, understand the politics, understand the economy. So, for example, right. we, excuse me, so for example, the, the, the children's hospital we mentioned in Basra, the wastewater treatment plant mm -hmm. in Fallujah, are you saying the Iraqis wouldn't have wanted those things? Uh, built? Actually, they, they didn't want the uh, the water treatment plant as as we were initially pursuing it, but but the challenge there was building it in the middle of of, of a war zone. You know, I, I think the, the, the that that was the the problem there in in Basra. Yes, uh, you know that I think that they needed a, a help a significant health care center, uh, but but it was chosen in a very difficult part of of, of the city. And, and that's what caused so many delays. What about abuse? We heard the quote from uh, Senator Susan Collins. She said the mm -hmm. level of waste, fraud, and abuse was, uh, she said, appalling. Mm -hmm. So in terms of fraud, I mean, you, you've talked about the waste. Uh, yes. What about the, the level of fraud? Here? We've achieved 82 convictions of, of U.S. contractors and government personnel who committed crimes in Iraq and recovered over 191 million dollars from those cases. We have 60 plus ongoing cases which we will continue to pursue uh, uh, through the balance of this fiscal year and, and I expect at least 20 more convictions and the recovery of at least a hundred million dollars. Was that, it, is that par for the course when that much money is being spent or was there something particular to Iraq? There was something particular to Iraq, uh, Judy. Uh, the lack of controls at the outset Created what some what one person to, called a free fraud, fraud zone in Iraq, and and the the Bloom Stein conspiracy we broke in in Hilla, uh, Babylon in, in 2004, convicted uh, a colonel, three lieutenant colonels, Philip Bloom, the contractor who has a, pr a pre previous felony conviction, and Robert Stein, the comptroller for the He's South Americans. Central Region. Yes, it, the comptroller for the South Central Region had a previous fel felony conviction. This is a man who had control over hundreds of millions of dollars. And he told me uh, when we interviewed him uh, a few years ago that, hey, if there'd been a powerful, robust uh, oversight presence on the ground, that the crimes that they engaged in wouldn't have happened. Stuart Bowen, you were observing all this from the very beginning. Did you see as you went along the mistakes that were being made? Yes, I did, and we reported on them, and that's why I, this is the ninth lesson learned report that we produced. I just I didn't want to run just a, a police blotter of convictions or a, a long list of auditor findings. I wanted to to take what we were learning, as what we saw along the way, and turn them into recommendations to the Congress and, and to the agencies, to the State Department, the Department of Defense, U.S. Agency for International Development, into useful 
best practices. But my question is, was the government, was the State Department, the Pentagon, were they listening to you as these as the years went by and you were submitting these preliminary yes. reports? Yes, yes, they were. I mean, the, the, the Department of Defense uh, did engage in a significant reform of its entire approach to contingency contracting. And, and I think the State Department uh, also absorbed the need for on-the-ground oversight. Uh, you know, early on there wasn't enough. Later, later uh, there, there was more. Uh, there always can be more oversight, I think, in, in, a, in a stabilization operation. What are the lessons for the future? Well, let me, let me ask you this. What, what, how should the American people view this? Should they be angry that about this much money? You said some of it was well spent, but a lot of it was not. Well, in, in an era of, of very difficult e economic circumstances, you know, $8 billion in waste, a report of such, would make anybody angry. So I understand that. Uh, but but the, the, the lesson from Iraq to draw uh, from that waste, from that fraud, is, is that we have to plan better. We have to execute better. We have to oversee better these kinds of operations. Stabilization and reconstruction operations are a reality with us to stay, hopefully never again at the size of Iraq and Afghanistan, but, but the, you know, we've had them before, Balkans, Panama, Somalia, Haiti, and we will have them again. But I guess my, you know, with all due respect, that sounds like common sense. Plan mm -hmm. ahead, uh, look at all the contingencies. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't that be part of, of a reconstruction? Excellent point, Judy, and, and, it, and you're right. Some of the, many of these lessons do appear to be common sense uh, realities, but, but, but the, the activities on the ground in Iraq drive these lessons. It, the, the 45 interviews that I conducted with the Iraqi leaders, U.S. leaders, and, and congressional members uh, dr framed these lessons, and, and they are straightforward, they are simple, and, but, and they must be learned. And direct lessons for Afghanistan. There will, will, will be reconstruction there. Absolutely right. There is. There uh, is. There and is. There will be more. Ninety billion dollars in U.S. funds going into Afghanistan, and and uh, and the Special Inspector General for Afghan Reconstruction is uh, has his hands full in in accounting for all of that. Is he looking at what you've yes, he uh, is. discovered? Yes, in he Iraq? is. Uh, quite a number of of the auditors and investigators who who serve with me or have now moved over to work with in his office, and uh, and I'm confident that that we're, you know, he's going to be cracking down and, and, and be very effective in, in imposing the, the necessary oversight. Even more money, $60 billion here, $90 billion in Afghanistan. That's right. Stuart Bowen, the Special Inspector General, we thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Judy. It was a pleasure.